All right, so initially I had this plan, right? This grand vision. I was going to watch one episode of the live action Netflix Avatar series per day. And then I was going to do a review and it was going to be great. Problem. The series is incredible and I don't want to wait around. That's right. I'm binging the series and there's nothing you can do about it. That said, I thought I'd do kind of a quick thoughts on every single episode and kind of combine them into maybe two videos when it's all said and done. I don't know, maybe three. We'll just, we'll just see what happens. You know what? I'm not making plans. We're just going to go with it. Ready? Here we go. Episode two, Warriors. Aang, Katara, Sokka arrive on a small island home to elite warriors named after the Avatar Kyoshi. The Fire Nation gets wind of the Avatar's whereabouts and they come to pay them a visit. So this episode was incredible for a lot of different reasons, not the least of which is we get the introduction of Suki. Suki, of course, a love interest, probably the primary love interest for Sokka. And Sokka does continue to be, the actor portraying Sokka continues to be the standout performance in this overall. Like, he is Sokka. He's, he's nailing this. It's incredible. And the actress coming in playing Suki does a fantastic job as well, and you can see instantly they these two have so much chemistry. It really sells their relationship and it also kind of just elevates the series as a whole. The fight sequences were awesome, seeing the way that the Kyoshi warriors use the fans. I love the idea of using Avatar Kyoshi to take over Aang's body so we see the potential of what a fully realized Avatar could be and what he has the potential to one day be. But I also love how they kind of showed Kyoshi as very much kind of like a hardened warrior. From what I know of the character, which admittedly is very little, but I do know some extended information about her, and she's kind of a controversial Avatar. She makes some decisions that could easily be seen as moderately even authoritarian. I don't know. I'm very curious to see if that's something they explore. We also see that the groundwork is being laid for Zuko to be betrayed by his own people. Episode 3, Omashu. This is the first episode where we really see a bunch of the cartoon lore being kind of squashed into one story, and this might be a controversial take, but I think they do it very, very well. News of a traitor puts the Aang gang at odds in Omashu, where a mechanist and rebels, with a charming leader, muddle their plans to protect the Earth Kingdom. I love the way this episode starts off with somebody that, for fans of the series, we might think is Jet. Like, that kid they show with kind of the uprising in the Fire Nation, like, instantly you think, oh, maybe this is Jet. Maybe we're actually getting introduced to him a this early b in a different location than we would expect and c doing something as bold as to go directly up against the fire lord himself spoilers that that's not jet but it does prepare us for the fact that we are going to get a jet in a very different way from what we got in the animated series once again fantastic acting jet portrayed to perfection wonderful chemistry between him and katara and i really felt like this episode in particular our main trio you could see they're getting comfortable with their characters you could see how they're really kind of living into these roles and doing a fantastic job with it. Also, Danny Pudi's here, so that's that's just a win, no matter what. That's instant win. Episode four, Into the Dark. Now, there is a lot about this episode I could say, but the thing that I really want to focus on is the brilliant usage of music. Yes, of course, there is the smash hit banger that we all know to be Secret Tunnel is in this episode. And I thought they actually handled this really well because it would be so easy to go overly campy, do the entire song, reenact the entire iconic scene, like they could they could do that, but they didn't. And I thought that was that was brave. That was bold. That was the right thing to do. But at the same time, they didn't shy away from it. We still got the song and it worked really well. They just didn't draw so much attention to it. I would not be shocked if in the future I'd revisit the way in which this series handled that scene and compare it against other lesser attempts at this exact type of thing. But it wasn't just because of the secret tunnel. In this episode, we get an exploration of Iroh. We actually go to the moment of his son's funeral. As Iroh's dark past is confronting him in the present face on, we see him reflecting on the moments in which his son died and is being celebrated by the Fire Nation. And all the while in the background, is the song Little Soldier Boy. It's kind of one of these things that it's so masterfully done because it's already a powerful scene. Anybody who's watching the series for the first time gets what's going on and they can connect with it and instantly it's got weight. But for those that are familiar with the series, you instantly hear the music and you know exactly what is playing and it hits you in a whole deeper level. To me, this is the brilliance of what this live action interpretation is doing with Avatar. It's taking the beloved stories and bringing them into a new medium that's enjoyable for people who've never actually experienced the original anime, but for those in the know, everything hits so much harder. So there you go. Those are my very rushed thoughts on those three episodes. Would love to know what you think. I'm right here at the halfway point in the middle of the series. Let me know your thoughts. Feel free to share any comments on these episodes in the comments below, but steer clear from spoilers for the episodes that follow. Is that complicated? That sounds a little complicated. Let's talk about it.